Hi, I'm Christine. Today we are looking at pink, so the lighter side of the reds. We all have choices that we look fantastic in, in every color family. Which ones those are depends on our own natural colors, or seasons, 12 different groups. You may be familiar with a color wheel, how colors are organized around a circle. The colors we think of as warm, red, orange, yellow on one side, the cool associated colors, blue, green, violet, or purple on the other side. Well, you could take any color family, say green, pretend you're driving around the circle. You could come in at warm green and leave in cool green if you're going to blue. You could come in at cool green and leave at warm green if you're driving towards yellow, but the order of the colors always stays the same. So picture you have 12 different color wheels around a clock. Each one has its own warm, cool setting, light, dark, and bright to soft level that applies to every color in that wheel. Each wheel is a season. The idea is the same. You can drive in on one side of a season, drive out on the other side, but the order doesn't change. Green is always between yellow and blue. True summer is always between soft summer and light summer. As you drive along, color properties change gradually. It doesn't go warm, cool, warm, cool, warm, cool. And it doesn't go warm, 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 cool, cool, cool. It's not how color works. It goes warm, neutral, cool, neutral, warm, neutral. Same as when you're driving through green. You're not at warm, green, cool, green, and you're out. You go warm, green, neutral, green, cool, green, and then you move on to the next color. The neutral warmth color wheels are for the neutral seasons, the ones that are both a little bit warm and a little bit cool. You can see them here. They're at one and two. They're at four and five. They're at seven and eight and they're at 10 and 11. Their name starts with the word other than true. And that's what most people are. Most like three quarters of the people. Their colors have warm and cool choices and they're not extreme about warm or cool. That's the true seasons. And then, of course, the seasons are shifting in other ways than warmth or coolness, too. They're shifting in soft and bright and light to dark at the same time. So all three sliders are moving under each wheel as you drive around the circle. Today's images were made in your style. Links will be in the description box. Also, there will be a blog post on my website so that you can see larger still images because yes, I do know the images are crowded. Once you get organized with your season, you can recognize your colors. The power that they have when they combine with your colors is a little bit shocking. Also make sure that your YouTube settings are set to HD or 1080. Look for the little gear at the bottom of your YouTube screen. All right, let's get started. Our first chart, not too crowded yet, <laughs> we'll begin moving the pinks apart in your mind's eye. So I've put the two warms, spring and autumn, and the two cools, summer and winter, side by side. Makes the comparisons easier. When colors are closer together, we tend to see their differences better. When colors are further apart, we tend to see their similarities, which is why it is so important for hair and makeup and upper body colors to be as close to your season harmony as possible. Whereas lower body and accessories, as long as they do well in the big picture, they are probably fine, depending on how particular you are. Pink is also a standard cheek and lip color. Another application to keep in mind with this family of colors. And most of the ones we see today are available in cosmetics. And you'll see that on in the shop on my website. So true spring, true autumn. Colors are very much influenced by spring yellow or autumn gold. Gives a very distinctive coral tone. Spring starts around middle brightness and it's going to go up a ways. Autumn starts around middle brightness. It's going to go down a ways. So the bag and the slippers, same color family, similar brightness. Autumn's a little softer as in grayer or less pigmented. The boxes below that, light spring, soft autumn, they both got a little softer because they both blended with summer, which is soft. Soft autumn is more softer because it's combining true summer with summer. That's two soft parents. Light spring combines summer with spring, which is which adds brightness, and there's summer in both, so they both cooled a little bit. In the lower left rows, bright spring, dark autumn, they started at true spring and true autumn. They also blended with a cooler group, winter this time. So they got cooler. Well, they're still more spring and autumn than they are winter, so they're the warm side of neutral. Winter also brings brightness, so these items both got 
more pigmented than their true spring and true autumn starting points. Let's go back to the top over on the right side, true summer, true winter. People whose natural colors are cool, so we see bluer pinks. True winter pink, cool, like true summer, but it's bright. You see how much more pigmented it is? True summer is softer and it's grayer than true winter in the shoe. It may look warmer, softer color often does. Also partly because the light colors for summer, they stop at chalk, whereas they go all the way to pure white in winter. White can come from yellow, the lightest color in the spectrum. And so with less pigment or yellow in a winter white, it can look a little cooler than a summer white. Cool neutral seasons are in the four lower boxes on the right. Summer light, the skirt, has a little bit of spring's blossom quality. But it's softened by summer. This skirt's a woven material. That's going to make the color look softer still. It can almost look a little bit autumn, but it wouldn't participate in the wardrobe with the autumn colors to the right. It would look a little apart. It would look a little too bright. Next box down, soft summer, has a touch of autumn. Well, let's see, summer has softness, autumn has softness, two soft parents, so the, the softness slider under this color wheel is moved down to the low end. Pleated skirt, it's one of the cooler pinks. It's also medium darkness among soft summer reds. On the far right, under true winter, bright winter's neutral cool. Compared with bright spring in the lower left, that's neutral warm. Bright winter colors are the clearest of all. Winter and spring have combined. These are the two bright seasons. And so it's bright even compared to the other winters. Compared to dark winter in the lower left, that's cool neutral too, same warmth level. But when it combined with autumn, the brightness went down a little bit. This is my mental image of their standard pink. You've got an earthy touch of autumn relative to bright winter above. But it's not as earthy as Dark Autumn's terracotta. So it's like pink with density. It makes me think of oil paint. I don't get blossom or petal, and neither do I get floaty or frosty. Let's look at the four main season groups once, and we're going to circle back and we're going to look at them again to see more of what this color can do. And we're going to begin with summer this time because it may have the most traditional versions of pink. So pink for summers, true summer is the first one. Cooler pinks, meaning bluer. Got a light to dark range. Pink sweatshirt at the top, that would be the lightest pink. The violet t-shirt, it's in the darker range. And then in between there are several more levels of darkness for pink. I love the hat and the shoe for the mixed fibers in the hat or the small print in the shoe. Makes the colors blur together a little bit, which is a great effect when steps between colors are small. It's like an impressionist painting, dappled light, where each dab of color is related, but not the same. Now we're in light summer. The jacket shows you the lightest pink. The jeans, next step lighter, or maybe the lightest, depending on the palette you have. Variations of the same color family. Both cool side of this season, meaning there's also a neutral strip of reds, and there's also a warm selection of reds. We'll see those later. Summer again, small steps of color because the light to dark range is narrow. These, this is the person that goes from chalk white to pewter. And so you got to fit a lot of darkness levels in between. It's like skipping stones in a pink pool. They touch down really, really often. And like the impressionist painting on this person, these pinks look different, related, but not the same. So you got to use your built-in magic. The effect it builds a very rich and abundant color experience, how this type of light creates depth and texture. Then we got carnation pink in the blouse, bit brighter, bit darker. Light summer being the brightest of the three summers, the most pigmented. And then the soft raspberry sweats with the so cute sparkles at the pockets. They're more pigmented than the true summer hat, and they're also not as blue. Soft summer is next. Neutral coloring. We're going to see warm, neutral, and cool pinks, which they have in abundance and <laughs> incredible flexibility in what they can do. Neutral warmth in the top item, bit cooler in the blazer. It's warmer than true summer, and it's warmed with autumn gold rather than spring yellow. 
It's also softer than either of the other two summers. There's a little bit more visible gray, not a lot more visible gray. There's an idea that these colors are just all mauve and gray. They're not that at all. They're just a little grayer relative to the other summers. The soft rose crushed velvet, uh, maybe it's velour top. This particular textile is incredibly good for soft summer people. The color too, it's summer's roses are mixing with that trace of autumn depth and richness, which we see here in the, the texture of the fabric. Kind of evokes dried roses, you know, the memories that go with them, how autumn develops a, a vintage or an heirloom flavor. Same idea as cameos, for example. And then the shoe at the bottom, soft, cool pink. And soft summer is going to get a fair bit darker than this, whereas light summer doesn't really go much past the sparkle sweats. Let's look at spring, true spring. We'll mix clear yellow, sunshine and daffodils with red, and now pink looks like variations of melon and coral. Say salmon pink, clear salmon pink. The earrings are light orange, but they're a little pink compared with say orange marmalade. They're not straight up orange. The dress is more cantaloupe. The zip neck sweater more coral. The dress at the bottom in between the two. None of these look very bright, nothing like that bright winter fuchsia top we saw at the beginning. But put them next to that soft summer velour blouse and oh boy, do they look bright and also kind of overheated. It's, it's a really all relative to what's next to it or who's wearing it. On a true spring person, it looks perfect brightness. Same as soft summer color does on that person. So it's not like self-adjusting magic is nothing like that. It's just the relative perception of how all of us see. So here the warmth up at the high end, the brightness slider is getting up to medium high in true spring. The light to dark slider, it's kind of around medium too. It doesn't get really light or really dark, but it floats around the middle. So what comes across is this easy going optimistic color. The, the everything's fine, no worry. The sun still exists, sensibility of spring. Light spring is next, combine spring with summer. They both bring lightness to the table, so the colors get quite light. I think the more important takeaway though for the light seasons is that they don't really go beyond medium darkness because there's a tendency to, light, to take light in name too literally or to apply it too globally to the whole look every day. I actually prefer light spring to combine several colors, especially if they wear all over light choices. Also to wear their brighter colors, which is where I think they just shine. And also wear their darker colors because everybody needs to look like a solid, complete human being and, and represent and express all the colors in them. Ethereal, well taken too far, I find it can look a little fragile or flimsy or maybe just pale depends on the person but everybody should look like a complete strong human being and our colors just give give us different ways of doing that this is the cooler side so we got recognizable pink with a trace of apricot in the pink the top and the shorts might be spring's version of pastels depending on your boundaries for pastel since their summer side gives them softness and coolness shorts coat handbag move around a little bit more from lighter to darker, from cooler to warmer. Bright spring, spring a lot, winter a little. These are choices from the cool and neutral sides with warmer reds in this palette as well. Jacket at the top, cooler and lighter pinks woven together. Why did I put it here rather than bright winter? Because when I pictured it worn with pure white, which a bright winter would have no problem with, felt a little stark or severe compared with clear ivory that would be much more appealing on a bright spring. Ivory felt better. We'd have to try in person. I also thought I saw that many more lip color choices in bright spring, whereas bright winter cosmetic colors, maybe they seemed a bit cool, a bit dark or severe, viewed right next to this jacket, which is basically where we see lipstick. The crochet dress looks softer and grayer than the other things in this column. Would that be light summer, do you think? Because it's really easy to confuse the two seasons, especially in the lighter colors. Mm. I picked bright spring because here's what I did. I found the best matching color in the palette. 
And then I ran the strip under the dress to see what happened with the other colors in the strip. Light summer colors, the light colors kind of faded. I could see the dark colors well enough, but the light ones were hard to see. And so there, what was happening was darkness was compensating, but that's not really how it works. If color needs to be dark to be visible, then we're looking for another season. Nobody's only the dark side of a season or no only the cool side of a season, at least not in the way that I see this or how I work. Bright spring colors held their own. Neither they nor the dress changed as I moved the color strip up and down. You probably have just the one palette for your season and that's fine, that's what most people have, but try it all the same. Move the strip and look for the clothing and all five or six color swatches in the strip to stay the same. And, and in the real world, this could be one of Bright Spring's lighter choices, one of Light Summer's deeper ones. It could probably function in both places. Now we're into True Winter, the jeans, light, cool, and they're clear. Nobody would call this dusty pink. They have a, a frozen quality even. Winters do have icy pinks that are lighter. We're going to see them in our second trip through winter. This is a light pink from the regular red options. The skirt looks yellower, but remember that the seasons are a journey around a clock. And so maybe this is just a tiny slice through the true winter red experience. Also, we know the seasons are about three things all the time. Warm, cool, sure, bright and soft. This skirt looks to me a bit less pigmented than the items in bright winter. The bags below show the same idea, more violet option above, more red below. Lower bag with the yellow metals. It'd be quite okay for bright winter too. Maybe there's softer side when you drive in. Metal is small enough, be fine for either. But I really like the look of silver and black with this season, like in the top bag. It's just better defined within the pink. Looks cleaner. Gold earrings and rings with this color. It's the same reaction. It can be hard to see, Maybe it looks more dull or dark or tarnished than it is where a silver really refreshes the appearance of the jewelry and the person wearing it. Bright winter, mostly winter, some spring. Textiles very easily as you see, got sheer and silky to t-shirt, to lycra, to cotton. With color this bright, you wouldn't wear many at once and you would add lots of neutrals in outfits. Gives the eye balance, a place for stillness or silence kind of the musical analogy because continuous signal, all of a sudden it feels like noise and you start to lose the meaning of it. So we're driving around a clock and we're leaving true winter and we're coming into the cool side of bright winter, the top two items. And then we're gonna come out on the warmer side of bright winter in bright spring, maybe more like the coral skirt at the bottom. These are not neon, but that top blouse is kind of synthetic, more of a highlighter color. On these people though, that makes a natural, easy blush. If, if the person has these reds wearing them. Bathing suit top, this is a darker pink in a textile that saturates well and holds brightness under the sun. I like it in a darker pink since this is winter. The person wearing this is a winter. They have the same darkness extremes that are a color property of all winters. Meaning they go near white and near black. And in the way that we see bathing suits, we don't always have other parts of an outfit to add darkness or whatever it is we want to do to balance the color. Could be great though with a black or white swimsuit cover up. Just saying how we wear things can influence the color that we choose. And then the skirt, we're moving into coral, but still there's enough red and saturation here to belong with winter, dark winter. If there were one season where I am often looking at a color thinking, what would you call that? It's going to be this one. This coloring combines a bit of autumn's uh, rustic type of natural. Some people call it log cabin. Others have called it harvest. I call it log cabin, actually, with uh, winter's more synthetic jewel tones. The world that combines olive and smoked ruby, ruby and then sapphire blue. The bag is a cooler pink. Warmer than the cool pink bag over in true winter, though. Dark winter is also the softest of the true winters. So here texture helps soften the color down a little bit. Hardware has an autumn vintage feel, maybe even industrial or functional in the silver and the black. The skirt, heavy rose, more density than petal pink. Nothing watery feeling about this pink. Backpack, a darker rose for this darker winter. It's like roses in the shade. 
And then dark gold hardware just gives the autumn presence a little bit of enhancement. The shoes at the bottom, warmer and cooler together. With the coral braid, it has autumn texture and strength like a rope. You'd have to break a sweat to snap that. And then the cooler pink in the shoe, it's smooth and shiny, but it's not patent. Maybe a bit of a scale pattern. Reptilian analogies often reminds me of winter, like big cats in autumn. Although this is a place to think for yourself. If you're feeling budgies or dinosaurs, go with that. It has to have meaning for you. Dinosaurs isn't actually bad, is it? It's like an autumn-influenced reptile. Something for the list of things to think about later. Pink for three autumns. Pink is coral, same as in spring. That makes life easier, right? Oh, oh, I can forget pink. Yeah, okay. Then what? Look for terracotta. Okay, got it. Get out of my way. I'm going shopping. <laughs> True autumn there is a pink, or say red in the blush. It's not straight up orange like pumpkin, but it's not gold either. It's both. The shorts, terrific autumn textile in a Santa Fe red, Grand Canyon, sunset color. That'd put you in the right world. Bathing suit, similar to the blush, a bit brighter. I mean, you could just do great things. A cover-up, sandals, gold, gemstones. Autumns can decorate like there's no tomorrow, as long as they just stay in palette. The blouse, moving closer to orange now, with warmth that gives the color brightness, but compared to dark autumn, over on the right, this has less red. Darkness is an autumn property though, and reds do get quite a lot darker than this, which they didn't in spring. Soft autumn, that's a warm, neutral color group. So pink has golden warmth. These from the cooler side of that season's reds, from light powdery peach at the top, and a soft coral pink. Those sandals, they're interesting as a pinker version, because I think of this as clay pink. Depending on your palette, a color like this might appear in soft autumns. Regular palette might appear in the corporate or additional palettes. And the pink might suggest soft summer, but I find them just a touch too earthy for soft summer. Color might look heavy next to the more watery energies of the summer groups. Clay and putty are, are autumn color effects. Suede contributing, of course, to the quality of the color. Bow ties. Soft light coral. I see this closer to brick than to blossom. And then at the bottom, gorgeous soft terracotta blouse. I mean, as easy as a color soft autumn would have. Could almost call it a neutral if reds could act as wardrobe neutrals. Winter, all three of them, they have icy colors. Very near white and frosty clear. Dark autumn and bright spring. Well, they're too far from winter to really do frosty and white, but they do have a se selection of very light colors. And this is the spiced peach from that group. Next top, balloon sleeves. Well, depending on the day, I could have put this in spring. Not bright enough to work with bright springs other colors when I did the slider. Drop the brightness, true spring, pretty good. I like trying red with greens and I felt calmer with the dark autumn greens when I made outfits compared with true spring, which really seemed just a little bit too bright. Like if you wore, the green and the coral together in an outfit, everybody would be looking at the green. Dark autumns, you know, they tend to love color and brightness, and they can have a tendency to choose colors that are too beachy or too bouncy, so try making outfits that balance. This one seems to me a good compromise. The gloves, well, it's as easy as can be, because you can see very dark autumn colors in these so cute wrist ruffles, <laughs> and the pink is perfect with them. You know, when the colors talk to the other colors, you're on the right track. And then the dress, rich, warm, paprika color. The only medium darkness level in dark autumn is like the dark range, which we will see is going to get a lot darker. We've seen the 12 seasons once. Let's go around them again and see what else they can be or do. True summer, lace, skirt, soft fuchsia. True summer, true winter, they share coolness. Would a true winter wear this skirt? Well, maybe. There are a few colors that would be okay for both, but I see the winter version of this color in the jacket. Bluer, clearer color might look a little aggressive on a true summer. And the skirt might look softer, grayer than it is on a true winter, somehow not as interesting. The wallet, another example, could work for either one, either true cool group, maybe more latitude because it's a small item and we see it at the end of our arm. You can see it's brighter than the rest of this group, but it doesn't stick out really. And then the shoe, we saw that in the first True Summer panel. Softer fuchsia, not as blue as the lace skirt. Could be their cool pastel 
maybe warmer pinks. The wrap sweater, if we were driving out a true summer, heading into light summer, this would be a nice pastel coral, soft enough for true, and cooler than the other light summer items that you see here. Sunglasses, great blue violet lens, and a really nice green frame too. Great for soft summer as well. You see the color gradients that are so good for summer. Lower left, the shorts. This very blue pink, have a question mark beside them, can be found in a lot of textiles. Like neon can be found in a lot of textiles. I see it as a little bit too blue to be altogether natural. But if anybody's going to make sense of this color, going to be true summer because blue violet comes so easily to them and you don't wear shorts right under your face either so you could make outfits M might be an awfully blue as a blush though the t-shirt above the shorts that would be closer to my idea of true summer's cooler red and then the soft raisin cardigan dark pink it's like soft summer if you look over at the fringe bag in soft summer it's just too pink to be burgundy or maroon. It's more like dark soft raspberry, less pigment than soft summer. This is also getting to be the darkness ceiling for true summer. Light summer, visiting the warmer side now. The purse, well that just looks made of lip gloss. It has this watery aesthetic like a summer drink, lightness, translucency. Compare it with the pigment density of the little tiny red bag at the bottom above the red sneakers or sneaker. So kind of quiet brightness in this season and sheer plays into these colors perfectly, which totally includes colored glass, the sunglasses with the rose gold frame, gradients with different colors. So we see summer's love of gradients and spring revving up the color activity. The belt to the right of the glasses, warmer side, compared with the earrings below. The belt also has silver metal, gorgeous in this neutral cool season. Although the rose gold in the eyeglass frames, the little diamond detail in the earring, fabulous. They're all good. The earrings, fabulous, combine various pinks. And they look like colored glasses, a tiny bit of popsicle aesthetic, but you're not getting icicle. I often think of fruit syrups swirling in water when I think of light summer. Then the sheer blouse, gorgeous print, floaty feel in the sleeves, a more opaque carnation print in the cami. Warmer still carnation pink in the dress where summer's monochromatic outfits are beautiful and you know why not a pink dress? Gorgeous with as uh, blush or lip gloss as well. So I'm interested in the darker reds for light summer. When is red too red and then it goes into winter? This shoe looks like a really good contender for a light summer red. It's easy enough to picture in this collection Maybe not perfect, but not so bad. And we see it here in the same size or larger than the other items, which isn't the proportion a shoe would have in appearance. Compare it with a little tiny purse, probably bright winter. Once you see it, it's more red than the shoe is red, and more, more something. And picture this life size with these colors, you wouldn't be able to see anything else. Soft summer, a version of red, white, and black in the cardigan combination. More color block than gradients, but still a great effect. Soft summers, they can, can be combined in any way you like, really. Soft cool pink at the top, more golden than the true summer pinks. Soft white, warmish white band at the waist. And then soft charcoal in the lower sections, as black as, uh, or as dark as color would get for this season. It wouldn't go darker and you wouldn't get a more intense black. Then Soft Summer has a warmer side, the bucket hat, and the excellent sunglasses beneath, and then add sheer lips in the lens color. It's just too good for words. Earrings, black lace and roses with the cool darker pink stone. Autumn brings darkness and has a way of making objects appear 3D, but here it's just getting started. We still have that exquisite, delicate touch of summer. Next on the right, the fringe purse above, and there's a light pink bag below, and then the skirt over to the left. There's a, they're kind of a warm, neutral, cool, or cool, neutral, warm trio for soft summer. Skirt's warm, does have golden tones. Maybe it is on the spring, on the soft summer, soft autumn divide, but I'd see it better as a blush for soft summer, more pink tones. At the bottom, 
the denim jacket, and then the sweater with the question mark. There are many items in stores that are as light as the sweater and very dusty, very little pigment, very soft. Well, I never quite know who would wear this and look great. It's, it's too light for summer pastels. Person might look washed out. It's too soft for a winter or a spring color. Now the sweater would look washed out. And, and it's too pink to be anybody's neutral. So it's like those blue violet shorts over in true summer. I figure if anybody's going to wear it, it's going to be a soft summer. They have enough in common, but under the face, I'd pick the denim jacket for the amount of pigment. More pinks for springs, starting with true spring. I wanted to take some time for coral, which is essentially true spring pink along with peach. Doesn't always come across in the palettes how we see colors being influenced by the colors around them. And sometimes you have an idea the colors are the same or it's the same color getting darker, but they're not really that. And so with True Spring, everything is warm. You have a narrow light to dark range and softness is medium. So the reds don't really seem to vary as much. And also for any color, a one inch swatch doesn't really show you nuance. Swipe it on a wall or a table or a blouse and you'll understand the color better. At the top, a peachy sand. You might find it with the fashion neutrals or the lightest orange, depending on your palette layout. Shoes orange, and it's here as a warmth and brightness calibration. So nothing we add should step too far outside of a plausible world with that shoe in it, like a garden with that flower. Coral, my most typical true spring idea, is the knit long skirt repeats one of the colors reflected in the shoe actually and it is pink in comparison to orange to the right of the skirt the wallet this is the lightest coral also a little softer than the skirt which is brighter for this season earrings below gorgeous medley of yellow and orange and pink beautiful smooth surface it looks glowing just like this blush would do for skin colors warm it's not intense and then in the bottom row another coral in the tank top and then a melon colored t-shirt with gold sparkles so nice true spring does glow and shine so well and one way to keep metals and stones from looking hard is keep the color warm but also keep their size small like the earrings or the buttons in the trench the trench is pinker but it is so good who else is gonna wear this but a spring the shine helps to Give it warmth as light reflects and also lightens the color, spring trademarks. So much more spring than anything else. I could see it on any spring in this groups because in these groups because 88% gorgeous is the same as all the way gorgeous, at least it is to me. So sheer lip in this color for lights, a bit warmer for trues, that's called making it work. Light spring, our calibration items are at the top, lighter side, warmer on the left to neutral on the right, and then we saw their cooler, lighter pinks in the first spring panel. This coloring type is less pigmented than true spring, neutral season. Warm cool range is wider, so pink and orange move further apart, meaning they're more recognizable as pink and orange. Dress is a light coral, soft matte textile, and you see the yellow in this color. It doesn't have the depth or the weight of gold. And then to the right, the fringe top, well, it's here because light spring is a bit of a muted spring and that gives it crossovers with autumn, which is another muted warm group. How about true autumn? Oh, the turmeric yellows were odd. A reminder to try your colors, not just with the match or the strip, but other colors in the palette. Try making outfits. What about true spring? Man, the greens were neon. I mean, the, this just felt comfortable. Next row, the cami and the jeans, blossom pinks in the top and a step brighter in the jeans. And lower row, the reds for light spring. Now these are interesting. Light spring is a light season, which means that no color gets very dark, which means that the rest, the reds are still in the realm of pink. We saw kind of that with the light summer sparkle sweats too. There's a limit on darkness. The halter neck blouse and headband they're like lollipop colors. They're not Valentine's. These are not foil reds. Lightweight fabric with sheen. Lightens and adds warmth. Transparency of the petals in the headband. So textile and color are working together. Bright spring. Winter's coming in now. Or leaving, depending on your point of view. 
I'm Canadian, I want to say leaving. Icy type colors are around, but they're not as white as winters. They're very clear. There is no visible gray in the puffer jacket. So that's from the lightest colors in bright spring. I kind of I had trouble imagining these. And so I asked myself, what would a candy in this color look like? Bright spring having candy properties. So try picturing colors in a world that the season evokes. The fuchsia blouse, the top on the right, one of the neutral warmth choices, transparency, lightness of weight, in a textile that holds dye well and layers beautifully without becoming heavy. Next row, neutral to cool progression, so you got a coral pink turtleneck and then a light cool pink fuchsia purse. There's warmth in this fuchsia purse. It does not look frozen, but it's cool enough that silver clasp looks clean and great, even better for being shiny like an icicle for a clasp, which is a very fairy tale effect. And then picture it over in true spring. It wouldn't work quite as well. It would look hard or cold. Similar effect if a true spring person would wear it in jewelry. Next row, fisherman knit and office jacket in bright pink and coral, a little bit untraditional. Spring is a bit unconventional. They do these very original and innovative ways of using color. Now we're getting brighter and darker too. Well now, when are we gonna tip into bright winter? Gonna to have to see our way to that. So we need a bright winter calibration, which I put in the fuchsia sweater at the bottom with the question mark. Looks cool and dark next to the bright spring items, even cool and dark next to bright spring's cooler pinks. Then just above the bright winter sweater, you got the coral pink purse. This is spring, coral matters. And then the cooler pink uh, purse on the right side, Little bits of black, no big areas of black. And shiny gold medals brings the warmth up a bit. And once again, the bright winter sweater is too blue to settle into this world. Winter, icy colors at the top. Icy means very light and very clear. More about icy too in the Is It Icy or Pastel video that you'd find on the channel. So true winter, I see a few variations. And your question might be, we well, said very light and very clear. How light and clear are we talking? Like this. You can see it's not white, but it's close. It would be comfortable with white or black in a print. Icy color would stay the same. It would not look grayer the way pastels might. The coat has more pigment, but it balances the black button well, meaning it's just too clear and light to be pastel. So I would still see it as icy. The sweatshirts, the one with the question mark, we saw that. Back in true summer, looks pretty good here too. Shares enough with true winter, coolness being most important. Just doesn't have presence with the darker items at the bottom, the way the pinker sweater to the left would. Maybe it would be a little bit wimpy and it might be that way on a true winter person as well. Hats, same idea. The lighter one could be fine with true summer. It's cool, it's light, true summer's happy. The darker hat, well, True Summer has similar colors. They're just not as bright or pigmented as this. This may be it's on the softer side for True Winter, but it would belong well with the palette colors and it would make a fantastic lip gloss. In the 12 Blueprints line, the light hat, that looks like upgrade gloss in True Summer. I don't, I've never tried it on a True Winter. I don't know if it would even show up. And then the darker hat, that looks like So Regal lip gloss in True Winter. Sometimes people look at their palettes and they kind of express doubt about their colors. Basically what they're saying is I cannot picture myself wearing these. And sometimes they have a preconception from images they've seen that winter is stark and dramatic, like soft summer was all gray. So one thing at a time, the hat's not stark and dramatic. It's just a warm hat to wear. And so, you know, as these panels have illustrated next to your colors, they balance out to be perfect, not in front of you or behind you, exactly the same as all the items in any given column balance out to be very good together. The purses, I love True Winter's darker fuchsia, and, and these are both great colors. The gold, well, I mentioned this earlier too, the gold on the right with the question mark, that gold just doesn't feel right to me. I mean, if it were writing, it'd be hard to read. You'd have to keep changing your angle, or you'd have to keep looking away and looking back. They just seem to push each other apart. Whereas the silver, it's just so clean by comparison. Easy to read, crisp, even the chain is defined. 
Bright winter. The icy cooler pink has more pigment than true winter, still very, very light. This is a neutral season. There's going to be a warmer version of icy, which we have in the pink peach sandals. And then the top with a question mark on the true winter, bright winter divide, on the bright winter, dark winter divide. Remember in soft summer, we saw two sweaters and said, is there such a thing as too soft? Well, again, with winter, we could say, is there such a thing as too light to be icy? I think it depends on who's wearing it. Depends on who you're asking. Depends what they're wearing it with. But I could slide this into any of these seasons, even through winter, and feel quite okay. Next down, the coat, the tiered camisole. They're cooler, darker examples of how pure this pigment can be. True winter actually looks soft by comparison. Then the neon shoe, oh, why not in a small item? Yeah, sure, it's lightning in a bottle, but we, we wear it away from the face, kind of like a purse, even a nail polish. I would not put that as a lipstick, for example. Jean jacket, bright coral. Shows us a, a warmer pink, shiny, in an unusual application, right? I mean, it's a jean jacket. It kind of comes easily to winter since the colors are a little synthetic to begin with. The purses next down, bright fuchsia, like dark winter, which we're coming to, but more pigment. And really, this is a surprisingly easy lipstick for many women. Then the cooler fuchsia crossbody. We see this beautiful relationship between these colors and small but committed use of black. Dark winter, icy colors. Those pleated shorts may be too light for some dark winters and they may be fine for others. I belong in this group and too bleached of an icy color can be draining to my skin tone. I'd probably be better in the t-shirt saying that icy color has some latitude. Next row, the two pink skirts, cooler on the left, warmer in the coral belted warm rose, let's say, on the right. The cooler pink might not be in the palette, but to my logical mind, it made sense. I mean, you've got a thousand colors you could wear really well that are in your season. And you still need a palette you're gonna be able to carry around, fit into a purse or a pocket. So your palettes are a curated menu. And I think this could be quite okay. Corduroy in the, the warmer skirt, that lends itself well to autumn colors. Here as a way of showing the earthy side in a bright pink. Next row, printed skirt, Eastern or Chinese painting on silk style. Warm rose, tiger for autumn, sapphire, true red, bits of white for winter. Someone watching might think, well, I'm a bright spring. I would wear that and I think absolutely. Change out the top and it'd be grand. Because it's really common that prints are very good for a couple of seasons and absolutely perfect for none. And so there's lots of ways to make them work. Scarf, similar idea, rich rose color. Print includes olive green, white, turquoise. And then there are some areas of soft color too soft for winter, but there are little areas, and dark winter can figure this out, being a little soft already. The earrings. Dark winter has a very violet fuchsia. It might be with the purples in your palette rather than the reds. Here in the lower square of the earrings, a bit mulberry, you could say, kind of in a shiny embroidery thread, gives it a jewel quality. Just seems a little too candy for autumn. The rose gold in the square above, a lot of red, but it's too red for autumn chili or rust. So again, it's walking that line between autumn and winter. And then the red connecting beads, they're really tiny. They look like Smarties or jelly beans. That could belong in the design for a winter, the synthetic thing, but it would look like children's beads with an autumn. Kind of here as well, but they're very small. And then the disc at the top, texture, shiny. Looks like rose in a plowed field. That's what I see there, a very original and artistic. And then the bags, winter goes to a dark end point. So pink becomes dark. So we can see the dark pink suede with a great lighter strap. And then in the lower right corner, rich pomegranate. And there's a muted blue violet uh, leather or inset in one corner. And then a brown leather strap with mustard stitching, winter plus autumn. More for autumn. Yes, they do get more crowded as I go along. <laughs> I know that this is our last one. True autumn, the light orange in the bag as one of the lighter reds. 
sparkly bracelets, soft peachy pinks. You might find them with the reds in your palette. You might find them in the fashion neutrals section of your palette. It's a gorgeous pink parchment kind of color. Two bags below, versions of soft coral pinks. What do I think of? Mediterranean clay roof tiles in the late afternoon sun. Lower one, pinker and darker. The bodysuit, a color true spring could potentially wear, like the balloon sleeve top in the first autumn image for dark autumn. I mean, there are colors that they wouldn't share at all, but this one they could. And then to the right, mocha rose, racerback top on the true autumn, soft autumn divide, earthy rose, be fine for either season. As makeup, it would be more noticeable, more effective probably on a soft autumn. Maybe the true autumn would need a little more gas, a little bit more pigment and darkness for, an, for it not to look gray or to actually be effective. Autumn goes to a darker end point than spring. So here in the ruffle top, one of the darker bronzed reds, burnt sienna, I would call this color. And then also in the great bracelet with the so yellow it's orange sun, Motif, very autumn. I mean, when yellow works, you're doing okay. Suede bag, deep coppered rose. Awesome. In a textile that enriches the color and it gives it depth. Superb blush color. Since lighter candy colors and cosmetics are ineffective. Sports bra at the bottom with the question mark. Well, true autumn could wear this fine. If you hold the wardrobe neutrals up to it, beiges and so on, the top gets brighter. Hold up true spring neutrals, top stays much the same. The relationship balances. So like this probably in a perfect world would go to true spring. Soft autumn can go quite light and powdery, but it's not blossom or baby pink. It's a warm glowing, let's say adobe pink. Purse, gorgeous soft pinks, yellows, woven textile that looks to me like a beach. Perfect clasp too in the soft brushed rose gold. And then a few cooler pink threads adds interest and mood without changing the overall color. That bag to the right, the lightest of the cool side pinks, soft warm powder pink. The shoe below, Mocha Rose, terrific, terrific cheap cheek and lip color, finds you where you are and then enhances your features just a little touch more. That's my idea of perfect makeup. Start with what you are, who you are, and then add a little bit of the same thing. Spiced orange bag beside the shoe has more warmth and darkness, but it's not extreme uh, in either dimension. Shorts like the racerback tank top, softer but less pigment. That's a lot of what soft autumn is. Just take true autumn and soften it a bit. Two pairs of pants next, soft rust uh, or brick colors, floral print and then a linear print. The cardigan on the true autumn, soft autumn divide, that's as warm and bright as soft autumn would get, tipping over into true autumn for sure, but you'll have soft autumns who really look very, very autumn. They have orange in their eyes and uh, orange in their hair or freckles, and they would wear this very well. And then in the bottom row, the deeper pink red in the dress, take true autumn, make it softer and lighter, and you have this warm, soft Marsala pink, and then the baby outfit, I <laughs> just have to show it to you. Soft, warm pink brick, cutest thing ever. Because sometimes you see little children and you just know they're coloring. And it, I think it would be quite rare to find this color in children's clothes. Dark autumn jacket, example of dark autumn's lightest colors. You're not going to call them icy, but they are lighter than, let's say, the rest of the palette because winter is is arriving here like bright spring had that shiny peach puffer jacket here it's a spiced salmon shiny like the puffer so it's reflective of light like ice just not as cool the purse like true autumn coral but more pigment still and this is the lightest of the dark autumn pinks except for the bomber jacket smock top more intense than true autumn colors has a burnt quality scorched as winter brings in more red, more black, more blue. And even the yellow is stronger, more saturated, even though the overall season is actually cooler than true autumn. Coat, warm and earthy, but it's bright at the same time. Pink, orange, and then a brass yellow and a tapestry textile. It looks so rich, like it's woven with gold. The earrings in the let's make it do something section, bright tortoise shell, the black and the yellow, 
you put that over in the other autumns, it'd be very contrasting. It would distract from the person if that person were wearing them. The shoes, examples of darker reds, true autumn could easily wear. And the metallic sandal, probably too, say a burnished orange, among the lightest of the warm reds for dark autumn. Good option for a cheek highlight too. It's in the function of that product to be the lighter side and to be reflective and metallic reflection where it looks so good on autumn much better than wet or slick or lacquer which can look a bit artificial for a lip color i much prefer a deeper color for looking more natural and balanced the lighter coral purse at the top for example might be dark autumn but as a lipstick i just find it doesn't balance the face very well it can look a little too crayon Dark Winter had a darker berry purple, the, the violet fuchsia pink we saw. Dark Autumn has black orchid, and here in a light to dark range, folded rose at the top, similar to what you might find in summer, but this is warmer and more pigmented. It might look like a flower, but you can tell the weight of it is more leathery than watery. Maybe how Dark Autumn does florals. It's a leather brooch, actually. And the darker reds at the bottom, this is low-hanging fruit for the dark seasons. The Raisin Velour hoodie and in a redder version, and then bluer version in the earrings. Textured very good in both. They could actually be great in outfits with the softer autumn side of dark winter too. So many things you can do with pink. And we mentioned that cosmetics are available in these colors. If you're wondering about what a match might be to a color we saw today, please ask in the comments. I'd be happy to help out. Cosmetics can ship to North American destinations, Canada and the States. They can't go to Europe because of Brexit, but who you want to contact is Anna Lazarska, who uh, makes the same line available in Poland for the EU community and paperback books are available in the EU. Just email me about those. A possible relocation coming up for 12 blueprints for me in the next few months. Makeup items will continue to ship as long as inventory is available, but inventory numbers won't be refilled until July of 2023, filming this in March of 2023. Makeup sample sets will stop shipping on March 25th, and fabric sets will ship until the numbers are sold out and then will not be refilled again until July. So I do hope to continue filming videos during this period, and I'm very thankful to you for having been here for this one. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.